like to say shout out to all of our brothers and sisters out there in social media land. <clears throat> This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is the day the Most High have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And we're going to take off running with the next set of videos. Shouts out to all of our brothers in social media land. Shouts out to you, Twit Where. Brother Deshaun Anthony, shouts out to you, Deshay Edwards. Good afternoon, good afternoon. As many of you know, there have been great fighting amongst the brethren. And I will say this again, that when we brought forth the videos dealing with the eating of flesh and blood, it was almost two years ago, almost two years ago. We know that many of the brothers and sisters have responded to that, and then we know that many of the brothers and sisters have not. And in this particular hour, almost two years later, uh, it seems as though those videos began to get in the hands of the right people. Of course, that was our prayer, is that the Most High, by His Spirit, would guide those videos into the place of those that had influence over the Father's people, that they may have an opportunity to respond to the truth of God's Word. And there have been a lot of infighting because of those videos. And uh, as we said once before, we don't tell people what they can or what they can't do because we have no authority on anything. We just simply deal with the word. And uh, I like to look along the lines of what's contained in the first chapter of Jeremiah. And that's where I got my name from because of a, a commonality in the spirit. The Most High declares that gird up your loins and whatsoever I tell you to speak that's what you're going to speak to your people he declares that you don't be afraid of people's faces because people don't often want to hear certain things he said but as long as you're not afraid to speak what's in the scripture he said then, then you won't be confounded and so uh I still feel the same way that I felt when we done the videos. And he says that though people may come out and fight against you, they will not prevail. One of the reasons why they will not prevail is because nobody can change God's word. And so <clears throat> when we start dealing with God's word, we're dealing with everything that God has spoken to Adam when Adam was created and given authority over the world that was known at that particular time. The Most High declared to Adam, the day you eat of what I didn't give you, you shall surely die. These are amongst the most simplistic things in the Bible. Yet when it comes to simplistic things, Rather than men accept the things that in their simplicity, they seek out ways to try and turn it into some deep mystery or try to declare that it, it needs some type of interpretation. And then at the, same, at the same side of our brother's mouth, when they're dealing with something in particular, they'll come back and say, well, the scriptures of no private interpretation. Our point is that God's word ain't ever going to change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And as Adam broke that seventh commandment that the Most High had given him, the Bible declares that his eyes was darkened and he died spiritually, meaning that he was separated 
from the Most High. And so a vast majority of the things that the brothers seem to use as a defense, they seem not to realize that those things come in after man had fallen into sin. And just because a man fall into sin and a lot of other things come after sin doesn't mean that God's word is going to change that he spoke before man fell into sin. And so as we sought out the promise that the Most High had made Eve that there would be a war going on between her seed and there will be a war going on between the seed of the same serpent that caused Adam and our mother to fall in the sin. That war will be going on. It will be raging throughout history until the, the Messiah came back again. And so we're looking at the process to which these things happen. And when the Messiah got on the scene, the Messiah was coming to bring to fulfillment that promise that the Most High had promised our mother. That one day her seed would be restored. One day the sin and the transgression that they had committed against the Most High by breaking his seventh law or his seventh commandment. One day that thing would be done away with. And then we will have an opportunity to be restored. And so we're not fighting with people about flesh and blood but we do mean to make brothers and sisters understand that God's word ain't ever going to change what he told Adam what he told the beasts what he told the creeping things what he told the fowls about that sixth commandment and it was a commandment it ain't never going to change and even though the sixth commandment had transgressed and it caused them to break the seventh commandment which told them thou shall not his words still ain't ever gonna change it's always gonna be what it is and so we don't waste our time fighting back and forth with brothers and sisters but what we are going to do is we're going to now start pointing out and showing brothers and sisters how it got like this and why it's going to remain in this manner Unless we can receive the things that come at the instructions of the Messiah himself. Because that was the appointed seed of the woman that would eventually crush the head of the serpent. And bring restoration to all those that would believe in him. We're going to keep this message as simple as we can. It may be a little bit lengthy. And as we said before, we want to show our brothers and sisters how, why we hold on to the things that we hold on to. And it's really not our fault. And as we go into these scriptures, then we're going to see those things. Well, you know... I'm not aware of who Lilith is, though I've heard it. Some say Lilith was Adam's first wife or whatnot, you know what I mean? But, you know, common sense ain't common to everybody. The Bible says when God made Adam, he made Adam in the image and in the likeness of himself. He made Adam male and female, blessed them, and called their name Adam. There was no woman when God created Adam. Adam was perfect and upright and full and lacking nothing, just like the Most High. But there came a time that the Most High declared out of all the animals that Adam was dealing with, he found out that every one of them had a mate and there was no mate for him. So the Most High reached inside of him and pulled out what was already in him. And that part of Adam that had already been built when Adam was created was now classified as woe man. She was woman because she was taken out of the womb of the man. Henceforth the Most High said the two shall be one flesh. Now, 
all of these other things that come, I can't compensate for that. So, only thing I can say is if it makes sense, it makes sense. So when Adam, when Most High brought Eve to Adam, he said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of the womb of the man. And then her name was called Eve, because Eve meant the mother of all the living human beings on the earth. Now, where we get the Lilith part and all of that, I don't go into these things. Ecclesiasticus, 23rd chapter, 3, uh, 23rd chapter, it says, Strive not after things that are too high for thy understanding, but rather focus on things that you can comprehend. Because I don't see how, even if we could find out these particular things, I don't see how they're going to help us with the life that we're living in this 21st century. So the spotlight is not on Adam, it's not on Eve, it's not on Lilith, it's not on Abraham, it's not on Isaac, it's not on Jacob, it's not on the 12 tribes of Israel, but the spotlight is going to be on the promised seed that will come and crush the head of the serpent. That is Yeshua Hamashiach. That's who the spotlight is going to be on. The spotlight is going to be on... Yeshua Hamashiach and the spotlight is going to be on the spirit that Yeshua Hamashiach prayed to the Father to send in the world to become the rightful instructor and teacher of men. And the spotlight is going to be on him for this particular reason. Because until we get to the point to where we understand, unless we begin to learn of the life of the Messiah, then we don't have nothing. And when we tell people strong things like this, strong things that come and shake the very foundation of everything that you came to believe, that Yeshua Hamashiach is coming to remove men from all of the books that have been written previously before him. If it's not pertaining to the life that the Messiah had lived, then you're going to be in error. Point blank and period. You can hold on to the Torah. You can hold on to the books of Moses. You can hold on to the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can hold on to the history of the 12 tribes of Israel, baby. But if you fail to comprehend that all of these were part of a process to usher us in to the promised seed that will crush and destroy the head of the serpent. And if you fail to learn of that life there, you see, because his life and the things that he had done in this world for his people, would become the replacement for everything that had transpired before. That's according to the scriptures. Hebrew 1, verses 1 and 2. God who had sun-dry time in diverse manners in times past, his process was to speak to the fathers by the prophets who were men. That means that there was a time in history that he spoke to men but uh, by other men. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who has been the appointed heir over Moses, over Abraham, over Isaac, over Jacob, over the 12 tribes of Israel. He is the appointed heir over all of the prophets and everything else. Appointed heir over the Torah. Appointed heir over all of these things. He is the appointed heir over all of them. And so we're going to go to the scripture with our foundational scripture. And when we tell brothers and sisters like this, because many times brothers misunderstand what you, it's not that they misunderstand. It's just that they pick out certain things that they want to hear. But for the person that has an ear, he's going to hear what the spirit has to say. Now, when we tell you that the, the, the Mashiach coming into the world and he is going to literally take men away from the books that have had us as captives, people can't identify with that. Well, what do, you, what do you mean? What is he saying? What is he saying? He's going to take us away. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm saying, and you're going to find that I'm not saying anything. Let's go here. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Somebody put that on the screen. Matthew chapter 11. Verse 29. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, Take my yoke upon you and go back and learn of the Pentateuch. 
Take my yoke upon you and go back and learn of the Torah. Take my yoke upon you and go back and learn about the things that Moses did in the wilderness. See, all those things had already been done. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And there you will find rest for your souls. There you will find rest for your souls. Now you have another passage of scripture in the Bible where Moses was declaring that the most high in the future shall raise up a prophet like unto myself. When he gets here, no longer will the people have to listen to me, but that prophet will the people hear. And those who will not hear that prophet, their souls shall be cut off from amongst their people. If you don't learn of the life of Hamashiach, there will be no rest for your soul. And that's according to what Moses had said. Those who will not learn of him or those who will not hear that prophet, their souls will be cut off from their people. And many of the brothers and sisters' souls have been completely cut off from the people and from the Most High simply because they refused to hear the prophet that had came to to complete the second half of what Moses was. Moses was the first half. Yahshua was the second half. How can you hear from Moses and you don't hear from the Messiah. When everything that Moses wrote was a concerning the Messiah that was to come. So this is significant. Because when he say take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. Now you have to ask yourself the question. Well how am I going to learn of him? When his life is not contained in this book that I'm reading, in order for me to learn from him, I have to step away from this book that I've been reading that do not contain his lifestyle or the things that he done. If I'm going to learn from him, now we don't tell nobody what they can do or what they can't do. The choice is purely yours. You got the same book that I got. I'm reading out of the same book that you got. Now what you do with what you hear, that's completely on you. He said, take up my yoke upon you, and then you learn about me. I'm not telling you to learn about all this other stuff, because if all this other stuff was sufficient, I wouldn't even have a need to be here. But the promise that was made to our mother Eve wasn't concerning the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, because they would remain in their fallen state until I arrived. And when I arrive, my arrival itself is made manifest that everything that was before me was to no avail. It was of no benefit except a preservation mechanism until I got here. So when we tell them, brothers and sisters, if you're going to learn of the Messiah, you're going to have to learn of the Messiah in the manner to which the Messiah put a methodology in the earth whereby we would learn of him there ain't but one way to learn of the life of the messiah because you can't find the life of the messiah in matthew mark and and, and john you can't find his life there if everything that's written in red ink represents 20 percent of the new testament <coughs> and then <coughs> You got the Pauline epistles, which represent <coughs> another 75%. <coughs> and then you got the epistles of Peter, the epistles of John, which represent another 5%. How are you going to learn of the life of the Messiah? How are you going to take his yoke upon you and learn of him? When you got more. In the New Testament, when you got 75% more, and really the 75% of the Pauline epistles, it goes up. As you look in <coughs> Matthew, Mark, and John, as you look in those books, and then you see <coughs> that they tell in the same stories. So now 20% that's written in red. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I just got to eat. 20% that's written in red 
Now it decreases down to about 7% because each one of those books are telling the same story. So how you gonna learn of the life of the Messiah? You can't learn of the life of the Messiah unless you learn of the life of the Messiah the way he said that you was gonna learn of it. Now let me show you something. So, anybody that has a desire to put the yoke of the Messiah on themselves and then learn of him, I want you to put a seven up in there. Because you're about to learn some things concerning the life of the Messiah that you've probably never seen before a day in your life. And we're going to show you why you've never seen him a day in, a, a, a day in your life. We're going to show you why you've never seen him. And this is one of the things that seem to be creating a great turmoil amongst brothers and sisters because many times you think that you have arrived at the grand sum total of a thing when you don't understand. There is so much more for you to learn. You can, In order for you to learn, you got to constantly be exposed to things that you ain't never seen before in your life. You have to constantly be exposed to things that you ain't never seen, to things that you ain't never heard. And when you hear things you ain't never heard and see things that you ain't never seen, they challenge you now. They challenge you to do either two things. Either you'll blaspheme or speak against them or you'll go in the closet and get on your face and start praying to the Most High that His Spirit will reveal to you whether these things are true or not. John 16th chapter. Now, anybody that has a desire to learn of the Messiah, it's only going to happen one way. Notice how the Messiah, he hid everything from people that didn't have a mindset to receive what he was saying. Disciples were asking things like, why do you speak to the people in parables? Why don't you just come straight out and tell them? He said, you know what, to you it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them it have not been given to know the mysteries because their heart is not right. But if your heart is right, then you can know the things uh, that the Messiah, the life of the Messiah, the life that the Messiah lived. It will be made, it will be revealed to you. Now, when he say, take up your cross and learn of me, there is only one way that it can be done. Because you can't learn of the life of the Messiah. In the 66 books of the Bible, you can't learn of the life of the Messiah. In the 88 books, that is the 66 books plus the 14 books of the Apocrypha, you can't learn of the life of the Messiah. In these books, if you're going to learn of him, you see, because the apocryphal books, they were all written before his arrival as well. If you're going to learn of the Messiah, here's how it's going to happen. When we start learning of the life of the Messiah, we must understand that there is a there is a there are things that are going to transpire that will cause us to understand that we are learning of the life of the Messiah. These things are spoken to us as a witness that we are on the right track. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended, says the Messiah. They shall put you out of the synagogue. They shall put you out of the church, out of the camp meeting, out of the Sabbath class. They shall put you out of the different organizations. Yeah, the time coming that whosoever will kill you will think that he is doing God a service. When we really start learning about the life of the Messiah and start moving in that direction, he said, this is what's going to happen. You'll no longer be welcome in your church. You'll no longer be welcome in your brother's camp. You'll no longer be welcome in your Sabbath day teachers because all of these things you will be teaching now against every last one of them. And because you are speaking against them because the Messiah came and spoke against them. He said this is the process that you will now begin to go through when you latch on to the truth of the fact that I am the appointed heir of the most highest righteousness in this world. 
not your forefathers. He said, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. You see, they have not known the Father because he, he who rejects the Son have rejected the Father as well. And if you don't learn the life of the Son, you only learn about the life of your forefathers and you ain't learn the life of your Son. That is a rejection of the Most High because it was God that declared to our mother that the seed that comes from your womb would crush and destroy the head of the serpent. It was Moses that declared, whosoever will not hear that prophet, his soul shall be cut off from his people. The same way that Adam's soul was cut off from God when he transgressed against him. And you got plenty of people out here claiming to know the most high. Just like the high priest who bought the office of high priest claimed to know God. And those that claim to know God always persecute those that really do know him. But these things I have told you, that when the time come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me, where am I going? But because I have said these things, sorrow had filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, then the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You see, the Most High, by, 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 by Yeshua Hamashiach being a rightful appointed heir over all things, he has superseded all men that previously, that God previously used in the past. And now he is appointing the Spirit because that power that is in him is about to leave the earth. And by appointment of the Spirit, he is making sure that that power that is in him can be in the same place at all times all over through the all over the world that spirit can reside in the hearts of every man woman and child on the planet leading them into ways of truth this is we talking about learning the life of the messiah then we got to understand what the messiah put in place for our learning because you can't just say that i believe in the messiah but you don't know how to walk like him because you ain't never been exposed to how he walked It says, and when he is come, when the spirit who I was seeing from the father, when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. He will reprove the world of sin because people ain't believed on him. He will reprove the world of righteousness because I'm going to my Father and I'm no longer in the world. And if men are going to be able to receive the righteousness that is in me, it's going to have to come by way of the Spirit who I will point in the world to become the instructor and the teacher of men. He shall approve the, the, uh, the, uh, the world of judgment because the prince of this world has already been judged. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you. Oh, no, when he, the spirit of truth, come, he shall guide you. No, the Torah shall guide you. He shall guide you. No, the Pentateuch shall guide you. He shall guide you. No, the prophets shall guide you. He shall guide you. No, the pastor, the bishop, the moray, the apostle, they shall guide you. No, it says when the spirit is come, he shall be the one to guide you. Into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And he will show you things to come. See, this is the way that we are going to learn of the Messiah. We'll learn of the Messiah's life by yielding ourselves to the Spirit. And the Spirit will begin to lead us into places 
that are outside of the things that we have previously had that existed before he got here. So when we say that the spirit is coming to take you away from the book, it's taking you away from the book because you can't learn of the life of the one that was the one that was to finish and complete, be the completion of God's purpose and God's program. So the spirit go now begin to lead us into different places. It's going to take the spirit to be able to lead us so that we can be able to learn of the life of the Messiah. Let's show you why. Before we do, let's go to a couple of particular scriptures. This is for foundation's sake. Foundation sake. Let's go to John 21st chapter. Let's go to John 21st chapter. Let's go to John 21st chapter. We're going to start reading at verse 24. This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there also many other things which Yahshua did, the which if they should be written, every one of them, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The reason why we need the spirit to be able to learn from the Messiah's life is because John, John declared right here, out of all the things that the Messiah both did and said, if it could be written, every one of them, then the world ain't big enough to house the books that would be written. And if that be the case, why do you have so little of his life story in this 66 book Bible? You tell me. Come on, somebody, answer the questions. If this is the case, that there are so many things that would be written about the life of the Messiah that the world itself couldn't contain everything that would be written, how is it that you can only have 3% of the life of the Messiah in the book that you say is the book that God gave you? So, the Messiah appoint the Spirit. And he said, the spirit is going to lead you to the truth. And he's going to lead you to the truth. But in order to find the truth, he's going to take you away from the book that you have become so used to. Because you can't find the life of the Messiah in it. And I know why brothers get mad. They get mad because they find the same preeminence over the father's people that their wicked forefathers had. And they're not willing to subject themselves up under the righteousness of the one that they say that they believe in. You see? So you look at all the things that would be written about the Messiah. They would all be taken out of the thing that would be handed to you. And there would be no way possible for you to learn about the life of the Messiah unless he appoint the Spirit. And the Spirit will now begin to lead you to truths to help you to understand how it got like this. And before we go here, we're going to go here. For some of our brothers and sisters that are always making excuses and making noise when they start when we start going outside to other places that the spirit is leading us it's the spirit that lead a man to discover new things it's the spirit that leads a man to turn over a rock and find something that ain't been exposed to no other man it's the spirit that does those things let's go let's let you listen at this before we even take off in the gospel of the holy 12 qualifications to determine the authenticity of the Clementine homilies and the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Over the years, and I am now 75, I have studied and cross-referenced the Catholic and King James Bibles, Dead Sea Scrolls, Gospels of the Nag Hammadi, the Clementine homilies, Humane Gospel of Christ, Gospel of the Holy Twelve, plus countless other biblical resources. I should point out the fact that of the different versions of the canonized Catholic and King James Bibles, the Catholic Bible, Douay Version, and the King James Bible, K.J. Day, both have been being printed during the same era while being severely corrupted, are the least corrupted of all the versions. Jesus, whose biblical name is Yeshua, was a member of the Essenes, and the Essenes were vegetarians. 
both the Clementine homilies and the Gospel of the Holy Twelve crystallize the fact Jesus, Yeshua, preached against the consumption of flesh. And there are huge differences between the lessons contained in the Clementine homilies and the Gospel of the Holy Twelve as compared to those within the canonized Bibles. By the way, from this point on, I will address Jesus as Yeshua. Apostle John wrote an accounting of the lessons Yeshua taught to his followers, and that gospel had several names attributed to it, a couple of which were the Gospel of the Nazarenes and the Lost Gospel. According to information contained in the early Church Fathers' epistles, the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke were based upon the Lost Gospel. By the way, after Constantine had ordered the destruction of books containing doctrine that had not been authorized by the First Council of Nicaea 325 AD, the early church fathers wrote in their epistles that much of that which Yeshua taught had been lost. The Clementine Homilies is a very important writing as it contains an accounting of the lessons Apostle Peter taught to Clement of Rome. And its importance is the fact the messages of the lessons contained in the Clementine homilies mirror the messages of the lessons contained in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Further, ancient Hebrew texts, far older than the Hebrew text used by most translators, support the lessons contained in the Clementine homilies and in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Those ancient Hebrew texts... You see that? You see, so when you start talking about the Spirit being the one that leads me into truth, and the Spirit is leading you away from the, key, the KJV, simply because it don't contain the life history of the Messiah, and the Messiah told us to take our yoke upon Him and learn of Him, He understood that we can never learn of Him when the only thing that we have been exposed to is what we previously had before He got here. So He said the Spirit now will transcend or translate you away from what you previously had and then lead you into places where you can learn of the life that I had lived. And many people start harping on the book, this, that, the other. But when we start going to do the historical research, we find out that Matthew, Mark, and John, they are all fragments that come from these books of the gospel of the Holy Twelve. Without this book, it predates, it's far older, written in the Arabic, coming far older than any council of Nicaea, far older than any compilation of any book that had been given to the people. These scrolls existed for long thousands of years, long before that, that contained the life of the Messiah. But they come to the conclusion that much of the stuff, the life of the Messiah, had been lost, and we're going to make you understand why. Let's continue. Let's continue. Texts also reveal the fact that scribes, priests, Pharisees, and Sadducees made alterations and additions to those ancient texts. You see that? Scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, they made alterations to the ancient text as a means to extract the life that the Messiah was living because he would never allow the consumption of eating the flesh. He became to finish the second half that Moses was talking about. I couldn't get it out of the people, but the Most High going to raise up one in the future like unto myself. He, the people will hear. Those that would not hear him, their souls shall be cut off from their people. So he came to abolish the wicked Levitical priesthood, the temple, and the the altar and because he did that his life would now be extracted as a means to keep the people in bondage and it wouldn't be but one way that we could be able to learn of the life of the Messiah and that is that he would appoint the spirit because the spirit transcends all boundaries in this world the spirit knows everything he knows everything he knows he has the mind of the most high he knows where to lead us to find the truth you see they tampered with these things and the Lord confirmed that fact when he told his prophet Jeremiah in chapter 8, verse 8, How will you say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? In vain 
had the scribes used a false pen. The ancient texts, far older than those used by most translators, reveal the Lord gave to Adam his first prophet, the everlasting agreement, which contains the commandments mankind is to obey, and knowledge of those commandments is crucially important to a soul's salvation. You see that? You're talking about the everlasting covenant was the first covenant that God gave to Adam. Seven laws for the son of man. Seven laws for the son of man. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue the earth, have dominion over it, eat the right thing, and thou shalt not eat the wrong thing. Seven laws God gave to man. Seven laws God gave to Adam, which was the everlasting covenant. You want to talk to me about the laws of your forefathers when the seed of the woman is coming to restore us back to the same seven laws that God gave our father Adam, which he break the seven and the whole world went into sin. But the only way it's going to happen is that we got to learn of the life of the Messiah. Why? The everlasting agreement makes clear that those souls who do not obey the commandments, whether they know about them or not, are distancing themselves from God. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You want to talk about 613 laws? You better get out here with that mess because when the Spirit start leading you to the life of the Messiah, then you'll come to understand that based on the same gospel of peace, which was the words that the Messiah was speaking to those that were sick and those that were maimed and those that were bound when he got on the scene, he said, now listen, Moses commanded us uh, that we can eat certain um, certain clean meats. You say we you forbidden us to eat anything. Which law come from God? Your law or Moses' law? See, Moses, he said, and, and the Messiah told him, he said, Moses, Moses brought ten commandments to your fathers. They said these commandments are too hard and they couldn't keep them. Moses then multiplied the ten commandments by a hundred. When He said then when the Pharisees and the scribes got a hold of them, they multiplied the hundred laws that Moses had multiplied. They multiplied the hundred laws by ten into a thousand laws. You talking about 613? Nah, baby, you want to keep some laws? You got over 1,100 laws that come by way of the scribes' pen. You got, you got all of that. But see, God's laws are seven. The laws of the angels are three. The sun, the air, the water. The laws of the Most High are one. The less laws that you have, the closer you are to the Most High. The more laws that you have, the farther away you are from the Most High. But you wouldn't know these things unless you learn of the life of the Messiah. And there is no way for you to learn of the life of the Messiah unless you bring yourself up subjection unto the Spirit so that He can lead you in the places where you can learn. Let's continue. Thanks to Satan's interference and influence, the everlasting agreement given to Adam became obscure, and God renewed it again through his prophets Enoch and Noah. Hold and it, hold time, it, hold it right there. He said the everlasting covenant that God gave to Adam, because of Satan's interference, it became obscure. And for those of you that don't, don't know what obscure is, it means that obscure, when you're a place of obscurity, it means that you're in the dark. That means that those everlasting covenant had been surrounded in darkness to where the people could no longer see him. He said he renewed it again through Enoch that taught you where the eating of animals flesh has its origin from with the fallen angels who once they had consumed all the acquisitions of men they turned on the men and then began to eat their flesh and drink their blood and then the earth lay acquisition because their blood cried out from the ground and the Most High said there shall be a great deluge in the earth and when he started the earth over he re Renew the covenant, the everlasting covenant again with Noah. And let's go read it and see. He told Noah the same thing that he told Adam. Let's go read it. Verse, verse 1 of the ninth chapter of Genesis. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto him, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. There's your first three. There's your commandments again. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. There they are again. Now watch the other commandments all wrapped up in what he says next. And the fear and the dread 
of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and every fowl upon the air and uh, upon everything that move on the earth and upon the fishes and upon the sea into your hands they are delivered you know what that means it means that the same thing he told Adam have dominion I've subjected this whole creation up unto you he said that every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. This is where our brothers cross off at because they think that it's talking about the animals. But what they don't understand is that a dead animal ain't living and a dead animal can't move. When he's talking about everything that's living and moving, he is talking about the same thing that he gave Adam when he established the everlasting covenant of all the fruits of these trees, of these grains, of these seeds. It shall be meat for you. He said, so to told to Noah the same thing. Every living thing that move it, it shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb, I have given you all things, but the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat, and your and surely your your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast. I will require it, and at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother, I will require this life. Of the man. So the everlasting covenant was renewed, renewed twice. Once with Noah and then once uh, once with Enoch and then once again with Noah. And we have all these stiff-necked brothers, but we understand why. It's because Satan have tampered with things and they'll choose to serve their forefathers rather than they choose to put the yoke of the Messiah on their neck and then go and learn of him. They'll rather stay stuck in the desert. That's why the Messiah said, seek not God's law in the scripture, which is the work of dead men's hands. For the scripture is dead. He said, but seek God's law in the things that God can give given life to. Because that is where God's covenant is established. That's where his covenant is established. So we just going we just gonna flow as the Spirit give utterance. Let's go. Due to Satan's interference and influence, it became obscure again. The Lord gave this prophecy to Jeremiah in 3131. 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It is written in both the Essene humane gospel of Christ and in the gospel of the Holy Twelve that Yeshua fulfilled his father's prophecy after his transfiguration on the mount when he gave his father's law of love to his chosen twelve. And that law of love is also known as the everlasting agreement. By the way, the Essene humane gospel of Christ also makes it clear those who violate the law of love, even though they do not know about it, are distancing themselves from God. The everlasting agreement and the law of love both tell us they who consume the flesh of any creature are distancing themselves from the eternal. But why? God loves each of his creatures he created. The eternal created his creatures from the same breath that he gave to mankind, as is revealed in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they all have one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Now, let's yes. pause right there. Because we've seen the video and we've seen the brother laugh because somebody said, well, well this brother's teaching that, that the Messiah came to bring peace for the animals. And I wanted to laugh too. I wanted to laugh too because I said, you don't understand. You in error. That is why the Messiah was called the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. 
He wasn't called the man that was slain before the foundation of the world. He came to save man from their sin. But man's sin was the unmerciful acts that was being committed against the, the, the creation. Henceforth, he came to put himself in the place of the animals as a means to save and deliver man from his sin. So you go on and laugh all you want, brother. But whosoever will not hear that prophet, your soul shall be cut off from amongst your own people. Now we're going to stop right there and we're going to show you when you start seeking to learn of the life of the Messiah, then the Spirit will lead you places to where you can learn and then you can understand how it got like this. And let me show you one of the main reasons why we got all this confusion out here with everybody handling the Bible from your church pastors to your apostles to your bishops, to your Hebrew leaders, to your camp leaders, to your Sabbath day teachers. Let me show you why you got so much confusion. And these comes as we learn of the life of the Messiah and we listen to the words that the Messiah spoke. Now we can start seeing clearly how this world is in the condition that it is in. So let's go and let's show you this. Let's go and let's show you this. Let's go and show you this. Let's show you why it's in the condition that it's in. Because you got people teaching things who don't have the, the right to teach nothing. You got people out here assuming lordship over people who are who are, are dumbfounded themselves when it comes to the things that Hamashiach spoke. You see, the disciples was chosen for a reason. And they received something that everybody else didn't have at that particular time. He said, when the spirit has come, you shall receive the power to become witnesses of me. And so you can't be a witness of the Messiah unless, unless... You get led to the places where you can hear what the Messiah have to say. And many other brothers can hear what the Messiah have to say, tuck their tail, and run in the other direction. But that's okay, because your soul shall be cut off from amongst your people, according to the words of the Messiah. In the last days, false prophets shall arise in the earth, and they shall deceive many. So I let them ruin, because I know that they are appointed for the day of deception. He that has an ear, let him hear. My sheep will hear my voice. They will not follow another. They're only going to follow me. That means that if you ain't hearing from what the Yeshua Hamashiach said, then it ain't to be listened to. I don't care who wrote it. I don't care where it came from. If it ain't the voice of the Messiah, if it ain't the life of the Messiah, you can keep it to yourself. That's where I'm coming from. Now, let me show you why you got so much confusion and why these brothers out here think that they teaching something, but they ain't teaching nothing. Let me show you why they can't comprehend the truth that comes by way of the spirit when it shows up. Here's the reason why. This is lection. 38 out of the gospel of the holy 12 and some of the disciples came and told him of a certain Egyptian a son of Belial who taught that it was lawful to torment animals if their suffering brought any profit to men and Yahshua said unto them verily I say unto you they who partake of the benefits which are gotten by wrong and one of God's creatures cannot be righteous. That's why they can't teach nothing. But because they're taking, they partaking of benefits and I was the same place in the same time. I said, no wonder why I didn't have the comprehension of the scripture that I should have had. No wonder why I wasn't having a pack impact that I wouldn't have. I was steeped in ignorance and steeped in darkness. But I'll pray to the Most High Heavenly Father for His Spirit that leads us in the places of truth. He said, those who partake of benefits that are gotten by one of God's creatures being wrong, the first thing, he said, they cannot be righteous. They have no righteousness in them when they're trying to lead you to some feast day to sit down and eat some lamb, eat some steak. Eat some, they cannot be righteous. I don't care what they make their mouth say. Ain't no righteous man going to run out here and rip the guts out of no animal that's just as precious as you. Ain't no, ain't no man going to be righteousness. When the book of Isaiah says, it declares, he that slays an ox is no different than one that slays a man. And he that sacrifices a lamb is though he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered incense is though one that offered swine's blood. See, ain't no way that they can be righteous. Ain't no way they can. He said, ain't no way they can be righteous. That's one. He said, nor 
can they touch holy things? That means that they will never be exposed to the things that the Messiah both did and said because he was the holy and righteous one that will come. And their spirit got to be right in order to enter into that place of rest for their souls. He said they cannot touch holy things. I want to allow them to enter. I want to allow them to enter because they're climbing up over the wall and there's a thief and there's a robber. They're assigning the sorcerers in this world thinking that they can buy the gift of the Most High through popularity and through favor of men and through all this external nonsense. That ain't going to happen. He said they cannot be righteous nor can they touch holy things. If we are partakers of the slaughterhouses killing God's innocent creation, we, if we go going and partake of that, eating things that have been sacrificed to the idol God of this world, money, where's your priest at? Where's your temple at? Where's your altar at? Don't come telling me nothing about Leviticus 11. If you're going to deal with Leviticus 11, you got to have a Levitical priesthood in the world operating according to the instruction that Moses had given them. But ain't no Moses... Ain't no Levitical priesthood, ain't no Aaron, ain't no sons of Aaron, ain't no temple, ain't no altar. Only thing you got is what the disciples went and told Paul. We ain't going to tell you to go and deal with the Gentiles concerning the law of Israel. But this is what we will tell you. Tell them to abstain from fornication and not to eat things that are sacrificed to idols or things that are strangled. And Paul went right over there and did the opposite. And as a reason that you ain't got the life of the Messiah to live by. You've been living by the life of one devil that has caused you to go against the grain of the Messiah declaring to you that you can eat everything. Well, Jesus didn't tell you that. The Most High didn't tell you that. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't tell you that. Didn't none of the prophets tell you that. But they all told you something different. Go ahead, eat your flesh. Eat your sacrifice. But I didn't speak to your fathers concerning this when I brought them out of Egypt. Bring no more vain oblations to me. Your blood, your hands are full of blood. When you come before me, I won't even hear, I won't even answer. When you spread your hands, I'll hide my face. But if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. He said those people cannot be righteous. Neither can they touch holy things. And I come to serve notice on every last one of you brothers. You can talk to your blue in the face. Go and make the video behind my back. Slander me behind my back. But whatever you get through, you just know I'll be standing there just like God told Jeremiah. This day I made you as an iron pillar and a brazen wall and a rod for the backs of the kings and the princes and the whole house of Israel. And though they may come out and fight against you, they will not prevail. For I am with you to save you. Thus said the Lord. Lord, we will stand on the word of the Most High. Seven laws to the Son of Man. Three laws to the angels. One law of God. And we're going to stand on that. We're going to stand on that. And you talking about all these brothers out here, they want to have debates now. Well, I tell you, it ain't even nothing to debate about. It ain't even worth talking about it. You just go on and live your life. Go on and live your life because you cannot be righteous. You cannot touch holy things. Let's see the other part. Neither or teach the mysteries of the kingdom whose hands are stained with blood and whose mouths are stained with flesh. You can't even teach the mysteries. And if you can't teach the mysteries of the kingdom, you can't understand the mysteries of the kingdom because your mouths are stained with flesh and your hands are full of blood. Those are the words of the Messiah which you brothers are rejected. But he who would not hear that prophet, his soul shall be cut off from amongst his people. So go on and keep on doing what you're doing. Then he reminds them, God giveth the grains and the fruits of the earth for food. Peep this here, brothers and sisters, so you can know who can carry righteousness and who can carry who not. For the righteous man, truly, there is no other lawful sustenance for the body. And you wonder why you got so much confusion. You got so much confusion out here because brothers have chose to obey men rather than to be up under the appointed spirit that will lead them in the places of truth. Now, let's show you how it got like that. Let's show you how it got like that now. Yep. Let's show you how it got like that.
This is coming out of lecture 44. Beginning at verse 4. All truth is in God. What? All truth is in God. What? All truth is in God. No, all truth is in your forefathers. No, all truth is in the prophet. No, all, all truth is in God. Who was speaking to Adam? All truth is in God. And I bear witness unto the truth. This is the Messiah speaking. I am the rock. And on this rock do I build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And out of this rock shall flow rivers of living water. To give life to the people of the earth. You are my chosen twelve. Hold it. Wait a minute. You are my chosen. Hold up. Wait a minute. You are my chosen. Wait a minute. Where Paul at? Where Paul at? That's what I want to know. But that's another story. But I just thought I'd throw that out there anyway. You are my chosen twelve. The head and the cornerstone are the twelve foundations of my house built it on the rock. And on you and in me shall my church be built. And in truth and righteousness shall my church be be established. He's talking about those who will have the authority to establish his church and teach the things and make the world uh, make known to the world the life of the Messiah was given to the 12 apostles. It wasn't given to no so-called self-proclaimed apostle that never was taught anything. He said by these 12, they would be the cornerstone. They would be the foundation of the church that he would build. And through them, the peoples of the earth will come to understand the life of the Messiah as they went out into the world and bore witness. He said, and you shall sit on 12 th thrones and send forth light and truth to all the 12 tribes of Israel after the spirit, after the spirit, because that is what he appointed the spirit. When the spirit come, you shall receive power to become witnesses of me. Let me read that again. And you shall sit on 12 thrones and send forth light and truth to all the 12 tribes of Israel after the spirit. And I will be with you to the end of the world. Now you tell me, how can the 12 tribes of Israel be receiving the life that the Messiah said that they would receive when the accounts of the 12 chosen apostles have been taken away from the people and they don't have no type of understanding as to the lifestyle. They don't have no understanding as to the witness of the 12 apostles as it relates to the life of Christ. But they do have one falsified, self-proclaimed apostle they're speaking against the 12 chosen apostles Speaking against the will of the Messiah How you gonna do it? So let me show you Let me show you what happened But there shall arise after you Disciples Men of perverse minds Who shall through ignorance or through craft Suppress many things Which I have spoken unto you And lay things Lay things to me which I never taught, sowing tares among the good, wheat, which I have given unto you to sow into the world. Then the truth of God endure the contradictions of sinners, for thus hath it been, and thus it will be. But the time cometh when the things which they have hidden shall be made known and revealed and the truth shall make free those which were bound one is your master all of you are brothers one is not greater than the other in the place which i have given to you for ye have one master even christ who is over you with you and in you and there is no unequality among my twelve or their fellows. They, so, so the Messiah is telling the apostles that they are the cornerstone foundation to teach and be witnesses of the life of the Messiah. He said, but after you, after you, after you brothers have been persecuted and after you brothers die, perverse men shall come in, some teaching through ignorance, other teaching by craft, 
things, they shall lay things to my charge that I never said. They shall teach things that I never taught. And they shall take the words that I did talk and they shall suppress the truth. He said, but the truth of God will endure. And at the appointed time, God's truth and his righteousness will be revealed to men once again. So in order for you to find the life of the Messiah, you got to bring yourself up under the methodology that the Messiah put in the earth. And that was the spirit. And the spirit is going to take you away from the books. Because you can't cling on to the book and the spirit at the same time. And the life of the Messiah is not contained in the book. So you're going to have to leave this book in order to find the life of the Messiah. And those that choose to hold on to the dead words of dead men, so be it. Their soul has already been cut off from amongst their people. But those of us who have a zeal of the Most High and really love the Most High, we are really to forsake everything in this world. For I asked the question, what book did I have? What book do the tree read? What book are the fowls reading? What book is the ant reading? And the ant is classified. Go to the ant, thou slugger, and be wise, and consider her ways. What book is the ant reading in order to become the wising of the creeping things on the earth? What book is the grass reading? What book do the beasts read? What book do the birds read as they care for their young? What books do any of them read when it comes to taking care and living according to the purpose that the Most High has set for them? What books are they reading? You see, it's the Spirit. That's what it's going to come down to. It's going to come down to the Spirit. That's what it's going to come down to. And you're going to come away from all of this nonsense or you're going to perish in the process. Yep. Yep. Now let me show you why. Let me show you why the spirit is going to take men away from books. Let me show you why. Let's go to the book of Enoch. Let's go to the book of Enoch. Let's go to the book of Enoch. We're going to start reading at Enoch in the 69th chapter. 69th chapter, and we're going to start at the at the ninth verse. This is the book of Enoch, and it's dealing with all of the things that the fallen angels had taught men. And we can understand what God said in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8. To all my Torah sinner brothers, to all my brothers that's dealing with the first five books of the Bible, to all my brothers that won't come past nothing, to all my brothers that know nothing about the life of the Messiah, we ask you what Jeremiah said, how can you say that you're wise and that the law of the Lord or that the Torah is with you? Well, in vain, certainly in vain did he it. In vain the pen of the scribe. The, the scribe willed a false pen to bring you back up under the same bondage that the Most High was meaning for you to be delivered from. So let me show you how it happened. And the fourth angel's name was Penumu. And he taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet. And he taught them all of the secrets of their wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper. And thereby many have sinned from eternity to eternity until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels to that the intent, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous and death which destroys everything could not take hold of them. But through this ink and paper, their knowledge, they are perishing and through this power it is consuming. That's why you're getting taken away from the book. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Not like the old covenant that I made with their forefathers when I grabbed them by the hand and brought them out of Egypt and I gave them writings and laws that were written with ink and paper. But this covenant will be a new covenant. I'll write my laws in their inward part and I will put it in their mind and all will know me from the least to the greatest. No longer shall a man teach his neighbor saying, Know the Lord, know the Lord. And why? And what is the embodiment of the new covenant? I'll pray to the Father. 
Father. He shall send the Comforter into the world. The Comforter shall indwell in you and you need not that any man teach you for that spirit of truth will teach you all things. He shall not speak of himself but whatever he hear of God that shall he speak. There's your new covenant right there. And they ain't going to come by way of no books. And the angels that taught men how to write with ink and paper, it declares. And the fourth was named Penny Mule. He taught the children of men the bitterness and the sweet. And he taught them all the secrets of their wicked wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper. And thereby many have sinned from eternity to eternity until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels to the intent that they should continue pure and righteousness and pure and righteous and death which destroys everything could not have taken hold of them. But through this their knowledge they are perishing and through this power it is consuming. Let's get a precept for that. Let's get a precept for that. Somebody didn't want to hear that. Somebody didn't want to hear that. Somebody didn't want to hear that when we take your book away from you, when we take your book away from you, when you take your so-called law, and when we take your book and the things that have been written away from you. Some of you didn't want to hear that. So let's put, let's put a precept on there. Let's, let's put a precept on there. Let's put a precept on there. Yeah, let's put a precept on there. Let's put a precept on there. Now, let's read it again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. I'm going to put a precept on there. It's coming out of the book of Enoch. Watch me put a precept coming out of the words of the Messiah on there. And the fourth was named Penny Mill, and he taught the children of men bitterness and sweet, and he taught them all the secrets of their wicked wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, and thereby many have sinned from eternity and inter until uh, to eternity and until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose to give a confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous, and death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them. But through this of their knowledge of pen and ink, they are perishing, and through this power it is consuming. So, you see brothers being consumed right there. Now, watch this precept. And Yahshua answered, Seek not the law in your scripture, for the law is life. Whereas the scripture is dead. I tell you truly, Moses received not his laws from God in writing, but through the living word. The law is living word of the living God to living prophets for living men. In everything that has life is the law written. You find it in the grass, in the trees, in the river, in the mountain, in the birds of heaven, in the fish of the sea. But seek it chiefly in yourselves. For I tell you truly, all things living are nearer to God than the scripture which is without life. God so made life and all living things that they might by the everlasting word teach the laws of the true God to man. God wrote not his laws in pages of books. God wrote not his laws in pages of books. God wrote not his laws in pages of books. But he wrote them in the heart, in your heart and in your spirit. And they are in your breath, in your blood, in your bone, in your flesh, in your bowels, in your eyes, in your ears, in every little part of your body. They are present in the air, in the water, in the earth, in the plants, in the sunbeams, and in the depths, and in the heights. They all speak to you that you may understand the tongue of the living God, the tongue and the will of the living God. But you shut your eyes. 
You know why? They shut their eyes because they love preeminence. They love the uppermost rooms at the feast. They love to be greeted in the marketplace called rabbi, rabbi. Whatsoever they bid you that observe and do, but do not do as they do. For all they do to be seen of men. But you shut your eyes to the spoken word of Yeshua Hamashiach, the appointed heir over all things to build back up a thing that he had destroyed that is preeminence and this one thing I do hate that you hold fast to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which is a stair step hierarchical system that have been put back in place whereby men now move through a chain of command as they seek to serve the most high but Jesus said call no man rabbi, rabbi, call no man pastor, call no man prophet, call no man bishop call no man teacher, call no man call no man by none of these they call no man Kohen, call no man more for you only have one teacher that is me and when you see brothers out there doing that you let that be a witness against them that they have crossed off and they have not heard the voice of the Messiah he said you only have one teacher and that is me and you are all a brethren you close your eyes when it comes to hearing the truth that the spirit lead a man to concerning the life of the Messiah to hold on to an outward external type of preeminence over men. You see? So, so the Messiah asked him a question. He says, so why is it that you do not listen to the words of God which are written in his works? Why is it that you can't listen to the words of God that are written in the air that you are breathing. Why is it that you can't listen to the words of God that govern daylight and nighttime? Why is it that you do not listen to the words of the Most High that shows you how God's law is still upheld by the word of his power in creation? He said, why do you not listen to the words of God which are written in his works? And why do you study the dead scripture which is the work of men's hands that came by way of a fallen angel teaching men wicked wisdom and how to write with pen and ink and it has no power this is pen and ink even though it's the word it's pen and ink it don't have the power to get up and walk around. It don't have the power to go and jump in nobody's life and change nobody's life. It don't have the power. But I dare you to start looking at God's law that's residing in all of the things that he have created that have life. Those things that change your life. They'll change your life. So... Back to that foundational scripture. If any man take up the Messiah's yoke and learn of him, you understand what it is that you have at your disposal. First John, second chapter, 25th through 26th verse. This is the promise that I'm promised you, even eternal life. I'm writing these things concerning them which will seduce you. But you have the spirit that you need not any man teach you. For that same spirit of truth will teach you all things. And there is no lying in him. And you shall abide in him as he have taught you. That's what the Messiah said. So why are we still sitting at the feet of men? What's wrong with getting in the closet crying out? And you got your brother over there in the 8th chapter of Romans that said, you know what, the Spirit help us with our firmly, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. And he made people think that they didn't know what to pray for when the Messiah said, well, when you get ready to pray, you enter into your closet and you pray to the Father that sees in secret. And that Father that dwells in secret will reward you openly. How are you going to tell me that I don't know what to pray for when the Messiah told us what to pray for and how to pray when you pray pray with this mindset our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is how you gonna tell me that i don't know what to pray for when the messiah himself instructed me whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you have received them and you shall have them how you gonna tell me 
that we don't know what to pray for when the Messiah told us already. You see? But we shut our eyes. We shut our eyes. We shut our eyes. We shut our eyes. We close ourselves off. You see? I'll take that. I'll take that. There's a passage of scripture for that. Blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. So I'm rejoicing when I see Satan show up. I'm rejoicing when I see Satan show up. I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. Learn the Torah. Boy, you better go sit down somewhere. I done read the tour backwards and forwards, up and down, sideways, in and out. And I can come right now and tell you, you ain't living by no Torah unless you're throwing dirt in the Messiah's face. And if you're throwing dirt in the Messiah's face, you better get on away from here before you get all the draws ripped off of you. We don't play that mess over here. If you don't like what's being said, keep it moving. Keep it moving, baby. We know when Satan's showing up. We know Satan's coming. We'll tell you like 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 the like the like the men in the Bible told told the ones that was persecuting the apostles. Hey, let them alone. Go on and let them alone. If what they doing be of God, you can't fight against it no way. And if it's not of God, it'll come to nothing. So that's how you look at it. If it's not of God, it's gonna come to nothing, baby. But if it is of God, what's being said, you the one that better beware. I ain't had no words of my own on this video. Everything is gonna come out of the scripture. I know what it is. I know it. You, 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 you just like many of the other ones. You get mad because I done tore everything off for you. I done ripped your butt naked and stripped your butt naked before all the brothers and sisters that you want to get out there and make yourself look good in front of. Uh, you got to keep the law. You got to keep the statute. You got to keep the judgments. You got to keep the commandments. Keep the commandments of who? Of men? You don't tell me about keeping no commandments of no man when you ain't willing to keep the commandments of God of all the fruits of these trees and you got to a dead animal hanging out of your mouth. You eating a rat. You eating a kangaroo. You eating a hyena. You eating a lab, a, a, a grasshopper. You eating stuff that you don't even know exists because you 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 worshiping at the hands of heathens, the one that can sit the destructive force into the world on, on God's creation. And you run the first one in the grocery store talking about I'm eating some lamb. But what you really don't know is that you got some hyena ribs on your plate because that's God. And what you don't know it's that you got the hospital report waiting on you in the future because these things, he that eat dead things is a consumer of death. I know why y'all get mad at me, but you can get mad at me all you want. I didn't say it. I'm not the one that gave you the fruits. I'm not the one that gave you the trees. I'm not the one that gave you the grains. But baby, you think that you're going to fight against what the Most High said to hold on to something that a man said. You got the wrong page here, baby. You got the wrong page here. Now go run and tell that. Go get all your boys. Go bring your leader back and let them come up and say what they're going to say. But you ain't going to no, throw no dirt in the, in the father's face over here. You're a Paul lover. You're a Paul lover. You're a Paul worshiping devil lover in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach, thinking that you can over, un, override what the Most High said. I know you better run, you cur. And people ask me sometimes, well, why are you so excited? Well, why do you get angry? Well, I tell you why. Because it don't be me. It's a righteous indignation that comes by way of the spirit. When the spirit sees Satan show up, our job is to crush his head and put our foot on his neck and make sure that he think twice about the next time you want to run up into the lion's den. Well, you run your butt right on up in here. And we got some word for you, baby. We got some word for you. We got some word for, debate you? What would I debate you for? When the scripture tells me, leave a fool's presence. When you perceive, ain't no knowledge on his lips. You ain't got no knowledge on your lips talking to me about no Torah. When the Messiah done already superseded all of that, you can find somebody else that'll fall for that mess, but I ain't gonna waste no time dealing with nobody that ain't got no knowledge on their lips. So you might as well star track your way on into the next page, brother. Yeah. Yep. And then they talk about let's have a debate. Why I want to waste my energy debating with a stiff neck, rebellious, hard-hearted, man-worshiping, Paul-lover, uh, wicked forefather-defending joker. 
What do I have to debate with you? You already embarrassed yourself the minute you opened up your mouth. Ain't nothing that you can do with me besides get crushed. So what we'll do is we'll turn you over to Satan right now so that he can have his way with you. And maybe one day in the future, you'll be one of the many brothers that have found his way back with his tail tucked between his leg and his head bowed down with tears in his eyes talking about, I see now, I see now, brother, what you was talking Talking about. I couldn't see it back then, but I see it now. So you'll be one of the many brothers. We have seen it many times. Because God's word don't go out and come to him vain. You talk about some Torah. You talk about some Torah. You talk about the laws. You talk about you talk about some the first five books of the Bible. You talking about the everlasting covenant that God gave to Noah, the one that started it all over. You talking about the prophets. Yeah, we we'll give you something to deal with, brother. We we'll give you something to deal with because you ain't got no debate over here. Only thing you got over here is a set of broke legs and broke ankles. That's the only thing you got over here. We ain't dodging nobody's train wreck when it comes to this word. We a Mack truck and you a Volkswagen. You can come over here with that nonsense if you want to. Go find you somebody else to debate with. You jokers, I always want to try to change God's word. Well, let's see if you change. Let's see if you can change this. Verse 20 of the seventh chapter, Jeremiah. Therefore. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, upon beasts, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and it shall not be quenched. Thus said the Lord God of hosts, the Lord God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and go on and eat your flesh. For I spake not unto your forefathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this one thing that I command them, saying, Obey my voice, and I'll be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in all of my ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But these stiff-necked jokers hardened, hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but they walked in the counsel and the imagination of their evil heart, and they went all the way backwards since the day that your far forefathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day. I have even sent unto you all of my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them, yet you hearken not unto me, nor inclined your ear, but you hardened your neck, and they did worse than they forefathered. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken unto thee. Thou shalt also call them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeys not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and it is cut off from their mouth. So you ain't got nothing to debate about. Period. Truth is cut off from your mouth. And if that ain't enough, any other one of you jokers think that you got something that you want to interrupt the brother's video with, you bring it on. Yeah, I know. Here. Here you go, another one. Here you go, another one. Because all the only thing you brothers is mad about, is you're mad about the fact that that brothers is telling you that Yahshua HaMashiach, that, that y'all steeped in idolatry, that you're steeped in idolatry, partaking of animal sacrifice, that sacrifice to the idol gods of this world because you lean into your Torah, but you can't produce no priest. You can't produce no temple. You can't produce no, uh, no altar. You can't say that you sacrifice an animal to atone for your sin, yet your mouth is stained with the flesh of, of dead things. That's what y'all mad about. That's what y'all mad about. I know what y'all mad about. That's what y'all mad about. Verse 4. Ah, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone all the way backwards. You see? Talking to me about Torah. You done gone all the way backwards. God who has sundry time and diverse manners in times past spoke to the fathers by the prophets. That's Torah. 
In these last days, he has spoken to us about his son, who is the appointed heir over Torah, over the prophets, over the Pentateuch, over everything else that preceded him. He is the appointed heir over. And if you want to go backwards, you go backwards, but you go backwards on your own time. Yeah. All together, gone all together backwards. Let me show you why you're gone all together backwards. And I ain't even dealing with this brother no more. But since he's on here, he can take the brunt of this word while it's coming at him. And that'll make you understand that next time he who meddle with business that don't belong to him is like a man that take a dog by the ears. You don't walk over here in my gate with no foolishness and take me by the ear and don't expect to get your ass bit. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or lambs or he goats. And when you come be to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand that you should bring detestableness into my courts? When you come before me, who required that you would come before the presence of the Most High with nonsense? Who would require this? That you would come and tread my holy courts. Bring no more vain oblations. Your incense is an abomination to me. Your new moons and your Sabbaths, the callings of your assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hate. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yeah, you'll make many prayers, but I will not hear because your hands are full of blood. And I guarantee you anything, I'll bet my last dollar that these scriptures are talking about you that are eating things that are sacrificed to the idol gods of this world. Why are you talking about you serving the most high and lifting up blood-stained hands with the stitch of death on your lips and you think that you can come and step to somebody that have an open eye by way of the spirit? You better get out of here. You better get out of here because I'm your brother and I don't want to break you in half. But if you stay around here, the devil going to cause you to get so beat so bad that all of your brothers and sisters are going to start weeping when they see the condition that you leave in. That's how we do that. Yes. I know. They did the same thing with the Messiah. Yeah, that do the same thing. So, so brothers and sisters, the whole point, the whole point of the thing is, is that. Let me show you another one. Let me show you another one. See, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time and a place for everything, and you know what? <laughs> as bad as I hate to say it. As bad as I hate to say it, sometime when that happened, oh man, in my manly flesh, I feel real good. Because sometimes I want to just go out there and beat the hell out of somebody. But I be in my flesh, and I can't do it. And God will beat me up. But sometimes that rebuke can come by way of the spirit. And you get to see the spirit just crack somebody's skull wide open for being out of order. And it just, oh... Oh, and see, brothers and sisters, when we handle the word, it's a bunch of misfitted, twisted-minded people out there. They think because you handle the word that you some science fiction type of person. They think that you ain't a person like them, that you ain't got feelings like they got. They think that you ain't got the same type of mindset. They think that you don't get uh, feel a certain type of way when people disrespect you. And then when you come out and you start swinging the sword or you start slapping people, now they think there's something wrong with you. Well, I thought he was a teacher. Well, I never said I was 
nobody's teacher. I ain't nobody's pastor. I ain't nobody's bishop. I ain't nobody's coheen. I'm your brother. And don't you never forget that. And because I'm your brother, you can't hail me to them false standards. I'll slap the hell out of you in a minute if you come out wrong. And I don't care how you feel about it. Because if you don't come wrong, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you step out of line and you doing things that you ain't got no business doing because they ain't got no place, then you can't cry about what comes back at you. You can't cry at what comes back at you. You can't cry at what comes back at you. Because we ain't in our feelings and our emotions over here. We dealing with the scripture. I ain't dealing with no personal opinion. Everything I'm reading is coming out of the books. And you say what you want to say about that. But at the end of the day, it's God that you got a problem with. It's not me. And I'm going to tell you something about the most high. You better read these scriptures and you better weep at them. We don't serve no timid, pussy-footed, weak God. Verse 20, the anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. And in the latter days, you're going to consider it. It ain't Brother Milligan that's angry with nobody. When Brother Milligan is dealing with the word, he deal with the word from the standpoint of speaking for me. In the anger of the Lord shall not return until it had performed the thoughts of his heart. In the last days, you shall consider it perfectly. What? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from the evil of their way and from the evil of their doing. Now, you let me ask you a question. You got a Hebrew name. You probably got fringes on. You probably got garments on. You probably belong to a camp. But let me see what kind of condition are the people in that's following you. Are they turning from the evil of their way? Are they turning? them back to the most highest proper diet or they still been steeped in sin because you yourself won't hear the words of God you yourself won't stand in God's counsel in the last days the people gonna start to consider it perfectly who it is that God sent who it is that's speaking God's word by way of the scripture now now okay I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and that caused my people to hear my words, they should have turned them from the evil, evil of their way and from the evil of their doing. And my God in hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? That's the question that's asked. Because I ain't assaulted you, brother. You assaulted me. But the God you say you serve tell you how you're supposed to deal with your brother. He said, am I a God at hand and not a God afar off? He meant, do you think that you're doing what you're doing and I don't see you? Do you think that I don't see what you're doing? Do you think that I don't see what you're doing? Why the brother is trying to bring forth some word and you come as a stumbling block to discourage other people from hearing? He said, do you think that I don't see what you're doing? Can any man hide himself in the secret places that I should not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth? I've heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. And that's another thing that they mad about. They'll call me a liar because I'll make them aware that Jeremiah prophesied of the fake falsified so-called apostle that came by way of a dream. Jeremiah seen him long before he got here. He would be a prophet that would come by way of telling somebody a dream when the Messiah declared when he died it is finished he hung his head and his died well if he said it was finished what would he be doing showing back up in the desert in Damascus on a road to Damascus was a desert road and the Messiah said if they tell you that they see me in the desert do not believe them if they tell you that I'm over there do not believe them I heard what they say it I heard what they say it prophesying lies in the Most High's name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. How long should this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yeah, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams that they tell. Look at how many people have forgotten the Most High's name, forgotten his standard, forgotten his righteousness, forgotten his seven laws that he gave to Adam because of the dream that had been told. Look at how many. 
Look at how many of our brothers that's claiming that they serve in the Most High while holding on to the coattail of a charlatan. Look how many of them are claiming that Paul is the apostle when they can't find nowhere in Scripture that Jesus ever told them, that the disciples ever chose them. They can't find one place in Scripture, though he say he was a prisoner of Christ. They can't find one place in the Bible where him and Christ was in the same room, let alone Christ putting a handcuff on him. They can't find it. And they get mad when you start ripping them, stripping them butt naked. But they got to be stripped butt naked before all the people so the people will know which direction that they should move in. That's what that is. That's what that is. How long should this be in the hearts of the prophets that prophesy lies in my name? Now the prophets have deceived their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by the dream they tell. Every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. As their fathers, as their Torah-keeping fathers have forgotten the Most High's name for Baal. As their father, your fathers forgot God's name for Baal. For Baal. Yep. That's okay. Just leave them be. Don't worry about them. We know Satan sends them. Satan going to always send them. But I don't want y'all to be distracted from what's being said. I want you to listen to what God has to say to him. The prophets that have a dream, let him tell his dream. But he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. For what is the chaff to the wheat, said the Lord? What is the chaff to the wheat, said the Lord? You got one brother speaking by his dream or his imagination or what he think. You got another brother that's going to speak according to the word. You're going to speak according to what you think about a thing. Because you, God gives you that right. But we're going to speak according to what's written in the word. So he that have a dream or a wicked imagination, you're going to speak by that dream or wicked imagination. But he that have God's word, we're going to speak God's word. Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Now, this is important. And this goes to any devil that will come on the page. God says, behold, I am against the prophet that steal my word from my people. How do the word get stole from his people? God's word can easily get stole from people when you got a, a, a charlatan that comes on the page in the midst of a video with nonsense and contention. And if you distract one person from hearing God's word, you yourself become a thief. And there is a woe on your life, brother. There is a woe. There is a woe. So we expect those things. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we know the Messiah went through the same things. The Messiah went through the same things. So y'all try not to be distracted. Uh by the brother you know what I mean that truth hurt it cut like a knife and sometime when truth cut like a knife it'll cut you so deep and so hard and when brothers know that they ain't got no defense against it they do the same thing that they did to Messiah when them when them people the Messiah was talking to in John 8th chapter found out they didn't have no defense against the Messiah they start antagonizing the Messiah himself well, we be not born of fornication. Well, we ain't no bastards. Well, he have a devil. You know what I'm saying? They, they call him a witch. They call him a warlock. You know what I mean? So that's just the nature of people. That's the nature of people. But nevertheless, everything's contained in the book. And when we started this thing off in the book of John, it told us that when we start learning of the life of the Messiah, people will put us out of their synagogue. They'll put us out of their camp. They'll put us out of their Sabbath day classes. They would even seek to kill us and say that they was doing God a service. They would even seek to kill you, not so much from a physical standpoint, but they'll seek to kill you or to kill your character 
or to kill your influence. They will try to kill your influence or your character by calling you a false prophet, by calling you a sorcerer, by calling you a devil. This is what the book tells us. And when we learn another Messiah, then we understand that the Messiah tells us that these are the things that are going to happen. And that's why when it happens, we're supposed to break out. He said to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Great is your reward. Your reward is great, but their reward is destruction. He said, and the reason why is because they've done the same thing to the prophets that walked before you. They've done the same thing to me. And if you ever want to put me in any category of people, you let me be classified amongst the prophets of the Bible. So we rejoicing and we being exceedingly glad and we thank the Most High for sending us a devil. Then we thank the Most High for, for allowing his spirit to be the one that will rebuke a devil and pull all the draws off of him and leave him broken and beaten and battered that he might have an opportunity to repent and fall out of his foolishness. And I was not lying, brothers and sisters, because some things that are taught they are so far off from what people have come to understand. It shakes the very foundation of everything that they came to believe and they don't know how to take it. And rather than to take it, sometimes they lash out. Oh no, this can't be like this. You've got to be a liar. You've got to be a false prophet. So that thing happened. But I have seen it time and time again. Them same brothers and sisters come back later. He said, I apologize. I apologize, Elder Dimitri. I'm your brother. You don't owe me no apology. I apologize, man. I just couldn't comprehend what you were saying back then. But I see it. I've seen it. I seen it. I seen the day that two Christians got together and they ran up one side of me and down the other side with false doctrine. And I felt so helpless because no matter how much word I had in me, I couldn't use not none of it. But they were in a spirit of agreement and they literally beat me to death. And, and before the week is out, one of them was on the other end of my phone crying real tears, real tears begging for a, a forgiveness, telling me that he was sorry because the spirit will get a hold to them brothers when they're out of order. The spirit will get a hold to them when they're out of order. So, you know, yeah. so the spirit, spirit will get a hold to them. Well, you know, you still here, brother, ain't you? See, that's that's what I like. I, don't, I already told you, I don't answer no questions that you got. For what? You know, you say Jesus knew what was in their heart when he seen them. He, he perceived what was in their heart. And he rebuked them right out the gate. He told them, go, go do what you got to do quickly. You know, you don't get no conversation out of me. I already told you. Scriptures say, leave a fool's presence when you perceive that knowledge ain't on his lip. You come the wrong way. Satan sent you. So you don't get nothing from me except a stiff rebuking. That's it. Now, you my brother, and I still love you anyway. But you need to mend your ways. You need to change your heart. Because, you know, the way you come at your brothers, you know, you shouldn't do that. If you got a problem with something your brothers is doing, you know what I mean? It's a way to handle everything. If you come out antagonizing and assaulting your brother like, you know what I mean, like your brother done done something to you, you're not doing the work of the Most High. You're not doing the will of the Father. God gives us a, a method and a commandment as to how we're supposed to deal with each other, how we're supposed to treat each other. You don't just jump and go, come run up in nobody's house and put your feet up on their coffee table and just go and invite yourself to their ice box and, you know what I mean, turn the air. You don't just do what you want to do in somebody else's house. Better to be told, come up a little higher than to be told, step down. And this is the condition. You see, when you insert yourself, chances are you're going to be asked to leave. You're going to get smacked down. You're going to get embarrassed. But if you do things in an orderly fashion, then, you know, maybe some, you know, maybe you could have, whatever it was that caused you to think that I was a false prophet or I was telling a lie, maybe you could have just simply said, well, you know what, I didn't get that what the brother said. Maybe I asked the brother questions or whatnot. You know what I mean? Man, you can't use no scripture. You done already, you done already showed yourself as being all the way out of order. It ain't but one way that I'm going to be willing to hear anything that you got to say. 
And that's that you got to publicly apologize for what you just done through the course of this video. And if you ain't got the humility enough to publicly apologize for what you just done before your brothers and your sisters, ain't nothing else that you going to say got no merit. And God ain't accepted nothing that you are offering. You know, God ain't gonna accept nothing that you nothing that you offer. Nope. So that's just how it go. So we'll get a brother, we'll get a brother opportunity to uh, extend a public apology to the brothers and sisters for his foolish behavior, and then we'll hear whatever he gotta say. We'll hear whatever he gotta say. Now let's see. Let's see if the brother got a, a spirit of humility. Yeah. We're gonna give the brother opportunity to come back with a public apology. Cause I ain't big enough. I ain't, I ain't too big of a man. If I'm out of order, I apologize. Yep. Let me show you something, brother. show you something. Let me show you something, brother. So we're going to give the brother opportunity. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 5. I'll read something. Yeah, it don't look like the brother don't don't look like he feel the need to he don't feel the need to apologize to nobody. So we ain't gonna we ain't gonna have no dialogue with him at all. Only way we're gonna have dialogue with you, brother. Only way. Yeah. We knew we knew that that's the kind. So check this here out. Verse 22 through 24. This is going to be for you, brother, because the video is going to end in a minute. But you're going to understand this. Is that just because the video ends, you're still going to be held accountable for what you have done. And you won't be able to offer the Most High anything until you deal with your brother about what it is that you have done. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Because I ain't done nothing to the brother. You just came on my page with this furious attitude and just start throwing stuff. But what you don't understand is that the Most High see it. He says, so whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, you yourself shall be in danger of being judged. But whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. He said, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there you remember that, you ha that thy brother have aught against you, Whatever it is that you try to offer the Most High after this video is gone, you understand that you have a brother out here that has an ought against you because of what you have done. You have a brother that feel like that what you have done is intentionally wrong 
and that you that 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 you should apologize. So that's what it is. You, I, I mean, you you say that it's, it's worthless all you want, but I'm reading it. I'm reading it as a testament, not just before you, but to the rest of the brothers and sisters that might be in the same situation. He said, when you get ready to bring your gift, or you offer whatever you offering to the Most High, when you remember that your brother have an alt against you, you leave your gift before the altar, and you go your way first, and then you reconcile your differences to your brother, and then you come and offer your gift. So basically what's being said, because of your behavior on today, God ain't accepting nothing that you given until you turn your butt around and come back and face your brother with the bad choices that you have made. No, so see the gift, the gift is dealing with anything good that you're going to do in this lifetime. Whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, you said you want to fight against the, the Greek, okay? So your fight would have been a gift to the Most High. But God ain't offering nothing that you're giving because your brother got an art against you. And until you deal with me about coming into my house and being disrespectful, you can do whatever you want to do. But I don't have no words for you. So, shouts out to all the brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. It's a day the Most High have made. We should rejoice and we shall be glad in it. You know that word is powerful when the devil will show up and he'll stay there the whole entire time. Surely he got something better to do. But he stayed there the whole entire time and we know that he will never be able to unknow those things that he learned today, whether he accept them today or not. He will not be able to. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray by the spirit of the most high that those hearts will be convicted, that our brother will be dealt with, that he may be won over to the most high's true commandment, the seven laws that he gave to Adam so that he can eat right and have his eyes open and then come to understand where he fit into God's perfect will and program. We pray to the Most High in His eyes. He's already forgiven because that's my brother. I don't care how foolish he acts. He's still my brother. And I'm going to pray to the Most High that He'll forgive me and have mercy on me. Should I be to say something that was out of order that shouldn't have been said, that He'll have mercy and that He'll have forgiveness on me so that I can be able to live my life without worrying about when I offer my gift to the Most High whether or not it's going to be accepted. And when that being said, we pray peace and blessings on every person up under the sound of my voice every viewer of the video we pray for every viewer every household that's represented by the eyes that are watching we pray for all the people that have responded to the seven laws of Adam we pray for all the people that have chosen to follow in the footsteps of the Messiah we pray that the spirit will now rest rule and abide with them henceforth now and forevermore and that it will lead them in places that are conducive to their group which would be according to the most highs will and purpose for their life as individuals we pray that the brothers and sisters will come to understand that no longer is a man responsible for the things that they will learn about the most high but the spirit will teach us and lead us in ways of truth and show us the things to come we pray for our brothers and sisters that have made the choice to make a challenge and come up off the flesh and blood that though they may fall here and there we pray for their strength in the most High Heavenly Father, all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High Heavenly Father's glorious Son, 